Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogazine and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was out boss. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath this creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought the right. troll Right, hello, good evening and welcome to episode 49 of the Tech Bytes audio cast It's Friday the 3rd of June, 2011 obviously And tonight we've got a quite a diverse range of subjects for you and I think the first one's going to be Google. So without further ado, I think it's only polite to go over to Roy and he starts us off with uh, the Google news. Roy, over to you. Uh, this afternoon somebody told me in the IRC channel um, that Google is making a, in my opinion, important move uh, with regards to audio and video of the video of the net. Uh, so just weeks after the news about Skype being acquired by Microsoft, uh, some would say, is a defensive measure before you know Google Voice and uh, uh, before Google actually arrives, for example, in the UK to provide voice solutions. Uh, uh, the news, uh, which I couldn't uh, provide a link just yet, I haven't read an article about it. I heard that they uh, had open sourced the video chat thing, or maybe just the video, maybe a component of that. Uh, under a BSD type license, which means that the uh, code that they produce, and I'm not sure it's the entire package, uh, could be made proprietary uh, by Google itself, for example, if they want to uh, make a better version of that, like they do with, uh, say, Chrome or uh, Chromium OS, uh, they could uh, take these libraries, whatever they open source, and make something else with them. That's fine. But I think it's partly a way of trying to portray their piece of software as something that's open, so it's free, and that's good. Uh, that's uh, that's going to provide some competition to Skype. So some people move over to Google. Now I'm not I'm not too sure. Maybe you can help me here. Is does Google use uh, SIP for communications? Pass. I don't know is the honest answer to that. And um, if you well, hopefully have, hopefully they will, because that's that's becoming the standard for lots of applications. And uh, the impression I got before uh, was that, especially if they if they're going to go open source, they might as well embrace the open protocols and work with all the other clients. Um, but I I think they work in their own way. And I think they uh, I think Warren told us they they bought Gizmo and perhaps turned the work of another company into something that's branded, you know, Google, even mm-hmm. though it's not really something that was made there. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite interesting news, especially for those who are still wondering. I know lots of people who actually are using Linux, and almost all of them had uh, something like Skype installed to speak to the very least, I suppose, members of family or people abroad or things like that. Uh, so they, uh, they would possibly have the Google option now, you know, being a big brand, and hopefully it will have good support for video, maybe they'll have something to replace Skype with, and maybe it will have some components that are open source, uh, then you... Well, I mean, I mean, as I said before, I, I won't personally be removing Skype until the uh, product changes dramatically from what it is, certainly if they to introduce uh, a, a different scheme or a, a charging mechanism for using uh, Skype. I'll certainly have it as an option on standby for somebody who insists on using Skype or maybe doesn't have a, yeah, yeah. any other method to, to speak over. But there's an interesting point which I've been meaning to ask for quite a while and it's been, it's been playing on my mind as to where Skype's going to go. And this is the same for any uh, VIOP service because there's some, obviously we've got Android and we've got the, um, we've got the Skype application on Android. And it makes me wonder, people are offered the chance of free calls, you can speak to the friends, and we'll, we don't need to go into what Skype offers, I think it's pretty pretty uh, obvious. But where are the service providers and mobile phone companies in all this? Now, for example, I'm with T-Mobile, and I've got Android on my HTC Desire. If I install Skype onto my mobile phone, I can effectively talk to you, Roy, or talk to anybody who was using Skype for free, cutting out effectively my service provider. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, I can tell you BT is working with Phone. 
uh, FON. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not sure what service is exact. Apparently, I'm privileged to have their service for free or whatever because I pay most for broadband. But uh, what they try and do now is to kind of um, uh, the, the, the big ISPs or telecom companies, they try to embrace this uh, internet thing and they try to make sure they still stay relevant. But uh, IP communication can effectively replace them in some sense. Uh, it is still using the same infrastructure, the same lines, but it doesn't use the same uh, protocols. Uh, the, po- the point with me- uh, that I'm trying to make is mm-hmm. if I call you on Skype on my mobile phone, I'm not making any money for my mobile phone fried up because I haven't got the yeah, tariff to charge me by the minute. Yeah. So I can't see Skype being particularly popular with any uh, with any mobile it phone fried up. In fact, uh, I remember back in the days around 2007, maybe 2006, I wrote something about the uh, British telecoms. And I'm not, not British telecom, but the telecom companies uh, trying to associate Skype with terrorism, uh, which was well, supposed terrorists use Skype to communicate. Well, also, also use pen and paper and mm. use phone and use all kinds of stuff. Mm. Uh, but the impression I got, they were trying to associate Skype with something dangerous. And I should probably mention it's been proven time and time again that Skype isn't free really private. You know, police gets back doors to it apparently occasionally and there are ways to get around it. And uh, I was hoping to cover later the news about Sky being reverse engineered. When I say Sky, I don't really mean the GUI parts, but the core program, which is people uh, establishing a connection and re- exchanging, uh, you know, transmitting uh, packets and all. Uh, so that's going to enable lots of uh, um, SIP clients or open source clients to implement support for Skype in the same way that some instant messaging programs enable you to use your Yahoo account or MSN or whatever using the same APIs or the same protocols or whatever. Uh, one of the things that might happen though is Microsoft might want to issue a DMCA takedown because the researcher, as he calls himself, who did this work has published the code. I, I, saw it, I basically saw his code uh, this morning. So the code is out there. Any developer who's working on a client and wants to provide a bridge, let's say from a Kiga to a Skype user, so you, you could communicate from open source with a Skype user, probably got a copy of the code. So it's there. It's 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 basically uh, uh, unless unless Maxwell wants to push people onto the treadmill now of uh, get the latest version, and you have to use the latest version to connect to the network, uh, and the latest version will somehow break the uh, reverse engineered version. Unless they do that, this is it. You know, you can now speak to people on Skype from any client that's going to use the code that's being published freely. So that's pretty important news. Uh, you might say it's going to harm SIP, and I, I think it's going to enable people to use Skype from a program that supports SIP by default, uh, in the same way that the uh, Office suite that offers ODF support, uh, if it also happens to open a, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to say OXML, I'm going to say if it, if it can open a doc file, an XLS file, if it can open the Microsoft formats, the old formats, the binary formats, uh, that's going to encourage people to use these programs because let's say somebody sent me a PowerPoint presentation. Well, I can open it with OpenOffice and I can save it in OD, ODP or, you know, whatever the, the standard implementation is. So I think that's really, really major news. Uh, actually, uh, it's going to undo a lot of the damage Mike is hoping to do. And uh, my theory based on the uh, a tweet which was made by uh, Stephen Elog is that Microsoft and Nokia have this uh, foresight or a plan of using Nokia as the phone maker or a company with lots of cloud in the mobile space to provide something to do with Skype and free calls and maybe exclusive integration with Skype or something of that sort. Well, I, I think, I mean, from my experiences of Skype with other users, and this is this is just my experience from people I know. But while Skype, you can't argue, has a massive, massive user base, and that's arguably what gave it its value when Microsoft purchased it. The majority of mainstream users don't actually use it yet. It's sort of on the stage that Twitter was a couple of years ago, where they maybe heard the word mentioned, but they haven't quite cottoned on to what it is or how to work. So I think there's an there's an ideal time now. 
for SIP and uh, related clients to get a foothold onto that market because ultimately I think it's the mainstream user which makes a product like Skype. 